Welcome to our last lecture in Chapter 4. We're covering Section 4.4, um, the, the graphs of the last two circular functions, secant and cosecant. So let's think about what the secant function is. Remember that the secant is 1 over the cosine function. So since the cosine is in the denominator, wherever cosine is 0, which is at pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, 3 pi over 2, which is 270, which is actually the same reference angle wise as negative pi over 2. This is a coterminal angle. Um, and you can see that because the cosine is 0 at those um, x values, angle values, then the secant is going to be undefined. Since we're looking at the reciprocal, when cosine is 1, secant will also be 1. And when cosine is negative 1, secant will also be negative 1. And of course, that happens at 0 and pi or 0 and 180. Okay, so this makes some sense of the values here. We've got some interim values as well, um, which are just the reciprocal values. And notice all of those values are um, 45 degree angles. or reference angles in different quadrants for 45 degree angles, okay? So if we look at that graph, we can see that, um, that we have asymptotes where the secant is undefined, and we have these parabola shapes in between the asymptotes, okay? This will make a little more sense in, the, in a minute when we can see this graph superimposed on its reciprocal function cosine. We'll see that in a minute. But let's first look at the secant function now. I mean, we are looking at secant, sorry. We've already talked about that the, where the x-intercepts, um, the x-intercepts of cosine will be the asymptotes of secant. There are no x-intercepts for secant, as we saw from the last graph, because we have just parabolas above or below the x-axis. Its period is also 2 pi, since it's reciprocal of sine, I'm sorry, cosine. The graph doesn't have an amplitude, since again, there are no minimum or maximum values. It continues. Um, infinitely to the positive direction and the negative direction. And the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, so the function is an even function. <clears throat> Similarly with cosecant, cosecant equals 1 over the sine function. So wherever sine is 0, the cosecant will be undefined, which we can see here at um, 0, at pi or 180, and of course, 2 pi, which is the same as 0, okay? And where sine equals 1, cosecant will equal 1, which is at 90 degrees. And where sine equals negative 1 at 270 or 3 pi over 2, cosecant will also equal negative 1, okay? And then we just have some interim values here as well, just to see um, how it might graph out. And again, we have the same shape where we have these asymptotes where the sine function would equal zero. And then we have these parabolas um, in the positive direction and the negative direction, okay? Continuing with the cosecant function, we can see again it is um, it has vertical asymptotes at all multiples of pi, which is where the sine function would equal zero. There are no x-intercepts. Its period again because of the reciprocal is two pi. Because it goes on infinitely to um, um, it goes on unending to infinity and negative infinity. There's no maximums or minimums, so there's no amplitude. And the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, so this is an odd function. 
Okay. When we're graphing the cosecant function on our graphing calculator, we're going to use the identity that cosecant equals 1 over sine x. So if you were trying to graph um, the cosecant of, um, let's just say, um, 2 pi x or something like that, you would graph, you would do 1 divided by, using your calculator, the sine of 2 pi f, the same angle. And similarly, we would do, um, using our calculator for the secant function, if we wanted to graph it, we would use the reciprocal identity and enter into our calculator 1 divided by the cosine of that same angle or function value, and then we could see the graph. So I think this is a really powerful graph here. What these are showing are um, images that represent um, what you might see on your calculator. And notice that what we have here is not only the, um, on the left we have the cosecant graphs, which we can see the parabolas up and down, but we have the sine function graph um, that shows the connections there. And this is how we're actually going to uh, graph them on paper is by um, recognizing the relationship with its reciprocal function. And similarly, on the right, we have secant, the parabolas, and then the cosine function is the, the cosine wave that we see um, in the middle of the graph. This will make more sense in just a second. So what we're going to do when we're graphing <clears throat> cosecant and secant is that we're going to use the reciprocal functions as a guide, okay? So we're going to use the sine function when we're trying to graph cosecant, and we're going to use the cosine function when we're trying to graph secant. Once we've graphed um, those reciprocal functions, sine and cosine, then we can immediately sketch the vertical asymptotes, because remember, cosecant will have, be undefined when sine is zero. So and similarly with secant and cosine, all we have to do is look for the x-intercepts. Where does the sine graph cross the x-axis and make those vertical asymptote lines um, through those points, those x-intercepts of sine or cosine? From there, what we will do is we will then sketch um, those parabolas, the U-shaped branches um, that fall in between the asymptotes, with an intersection point at the maximums and minimums of sine and or cosine. So the branches will be above the graph of the guide function when the, when the guide functions are positive and below it when they are negative. So let's at, look at an example here and we'll go through those steps so you can see each one. So we're going to graph 2 secant 1 half x. So in order to do this, we first want to graph the reciprocal function. The reciprocal of secant is cosine. So notice all we're going to do is replace secant with cosine and first graph this. Well, of course, we know how to do this. We identify the key elements and variables, the amplitude, the periodic, uh, sorry, the period adjuster, um, any kind of vertical shift, um, C, and then, of course, any phase shift or horizontal shift D. And we've done that here. We can build our table. We know how to do this. I'm not going to go through that. We see our X values and our Y values. And so we're going to graph this, okay? Notice that we've graphed this um, reciprocal function as a dashed line. We then input wherever that reciprocal function is crossing the X axis, is where we have the vertical asymptotes or the dashed lines up and down that the secant will never um, cross or touch. They'll get closer and closer. So what we're doing is wherever it's touching the x-axis, we're now drawing the asymptotes in. All right. And then the last part is to draw in um, the U-shaped branches. And again, if it's on the positive side, they're going up. If it's on the negative side, they're going down. And a key point here is to also notice that there is an intersection point with the max or the minimums of the reciprocal function. Notice again, the U-shapes happen between the asymptotes. 
and they're intersecting at the maximums and the minimums, okay? They're alternating on the positive and negative side. You can see that um, from this graph, okay? Let's try another one. These are pretty straightforward. If you're good at graphing sine and cosine, um, then they're pretty straightforward for graphing secant and cosecant. Since we're graphing the cosecant function here, our reciprocal function is the sine function. Again, we're going to look for the key elements A, B, C, and D. Amplitude, period, vertical, and phase shift. I'm not going to go through the table this time. You've seen that enough. So here's the graph of the sine function that's corresponding to this cosecant function. The next thing we're going to do is to, draw, uh, to sketch our vertical asymptotes. And where do those happen? They happen at the x-intercepts, wherever it's crossing the x-axis. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is to, uh, sketch in our U-shaped branches between the asymptotes. Remember, they, um, they go between each of the asymptotes. When it's positive, they go up. When it's negative, they go down. And they have intersection points at the maximums and at the minimums, as you can see here. Intersection point at a minimum, intersection point at a maximum, etc., all the way through. Again, we've drawn the uh, reciprocal function, in this case the sine function, with a dashed line. We've indicated all of the vertical asymptotes where that reciprocal function crossed the x-axis. And then we've just drawn our parabolas, our smiles and frowns, above and below the x-axis, intersecting with maxes and minimums. So these are pretty straightforward to draw, um, to graph, as long as you are comfortable graphing the... Um, sine and cosine function, and that's handled in 4.2 in great detail. So what happens when we need to determine an equation for the graph? Okay, well, a couple of things you want to do here is you want to think about what is the period? Okay, notice this um, graph, we've got an up shape and then a down shape happens between 0 and 4 pi. So our period here is 4 pi. Okay. We've gone through the entire cycle, one up parabola and one down parabola in 4 pi. Okay. Remember that our period, our new period for whatever we're doing, equals 2 pi over that period shift variable b. So we can figure out what b will be in the equation for this graph, and that's what we're trying to figure out. So if we solve this, we get b equals 1 half. 4 pi equals 2 pi over b. Solving that algebraically, you get b equals 1 half. Okay? Now, if we're trying to figure out whether this is a secant or a cosecant, what we want to do is look at the intersecting points. Okay? So here we have an intersection at 1 and at negative 1, and it's at pi. But remember, these are the adjusted um, key values. You know, when we start with our sine and cosine function, we start with the quadrantals, right? 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So these have been adjusted. So we have to kind of um, go back and figure out what is the actual original key value here. Remember that the way that we adjust them is we divide by b. We take the original quadrantal, 0, 90, 180, 270, and divide by b. That's the second row of our graphing um, chart for sine and cosine. So let's do that in reverse. So if b equals 1 half, then let's try to figure out what the original key value was. What was the original quadrantal for pi? Remember, we find those by dividing the key value by b. So if we set up this equation, pi equals the original key value over b, or the key value over 0.5, then we're going to multiply both sides by 0.5 or 1 half. And we get that this original key value here, where that intersection point is with whatever that max would be, 1, 
would be at pi over 2. So that's the question we want to ask is which function sine or cosine equals 1 at the key value of pi over 2? Well, of course, that would be sine. It's the y value at 90. And so since sine equals um, 1 at pi over 2, then this function, which is intersecting with it, is its reciprocal, which is cosecant. Okay? <clears throat> so given our information now, we know that this function is a graph of y equals cosecant 1 half x. Okay? We notice that there wasn't any um, upward or downward shift because the maxes and the minimums are, um, although there's not really max and minimums, the intersection points occur at 1 and negative 1. So it didn't shift up or down, and um, we already handled the change in the period with the period adjuster B. Okay. So this is kind of what you're going to do. You're going to look at, uh, if you're trying to figure out the equation, look at uh, first what is the period so you can figure out that period adjuster um, variable and then try to figure out what's happening at the intersection points is it a sine is it intersecting with a sine or a cosine function at that original key value let's try one more of these again we're going to ask ourselves what is the period this one's this one's off centered a little bit so we have to think okay it goes from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So that's a pi and a half plus another half, so we get actually 2 pi. Okay? Well, this is the normal, this is the normal um, period for secant or cosecant. So we do not have any period adjuster, so b is going to be equal to 1. Okay? So the next thing remember we're looking at is the the intersecting points now i know that this is not at one um, but we're going to deal with that in a minute but since the period is the same and we don't have any shifts we're going to ask ourselves um, who would have the value of one when cosine or excuse me when um, the angle is zero so is uh, cosine of zero one or is sine of zero one well, cosine of 0 is 1, so that means that this is the secant function. Okay? Notice that our functional values, um, the intersection points are at 2 and 0, not 1 and negative 1. And what this helps us see is that they're still two units apart, so there hasn't been a, um, there's not an, an amplitude multiplier but in fact, it's just shifted up by one, okay? So again, with these three pieces of information, we can see that we have the graph of y equals secant x translated one unit upward, which that would be the um, equivalent of the c variable equaling one. And so we see that the equation of this graph is actually one plus secant x. And so that's the end of this graphing for secant and cosecant. So as long as you're comfortable doing sine and cosine, you should be able to do these pretty simply um, in, a, in a relative um, estimation way of graphing these.